Hey everyone, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and today I'm gonna to show you how to get the best performance out of drum brakes on your motorcycle. Drum brakes have been around for a long time. They're not as common as they used to be, but they still come on some new dirt and street bikes, and there's enough of these out there that we wanna show you how to get the best performance out of them. So if you've noticed the performance on your drum brakes drop over time, we're going to show you how to restore that performance as well as fix some of the common issues with them. Now these shoes are out of this bike and we, since we already replaced them, we made a separate video on how to do that. So if that's all you need to do, make sure you watch that video. But again, today we're just focusing on performance. So let's get started. To do this job, we have some common hand tools, rags, safety glasses, and some chemicals, including grease, lubricating oil, some brake cleaner, a drain pan. We are also using a cable luber, some Scotch-Brite, and some fine sandpaper. Now for parts, you will have some options with the brake shoes, aftermarket or OEM. Now the rest of the parts, most often you're gonna have to get OEM. You can find those parts on our website. Now, Throughout the process, you want to refer to your model specific service manual for more information and specs. The first thing we're going to do is remove our front wheel. Now, a lot of times you can restore the performance on your brakes by making a simple adjustment. We'll show you more about that a little later on, but since we want to get the best performance out of our brakes, we're going to start at the heart of this thing and inspect the brake shoes and the brake drum. We'll start our first inspection with these brake shoes. So one of the main things that causes poor stopping performance is a glazed brake shoe. Sometimes you can get that drum glazed too. It'll be a real shiny surface on both the shoe and on that drum. And that's just caused by these shoes getting hot, whether your brakes are dragging or you've just done some really hard braking with them. So on the left, on my left, I have a brand new brake shoe. This is you want, what you want it to look like. If you have any glazing, I highly recommend just replacing the shoes. They're fairly inexpensive, but if you can't replace the shoes for some reason, um, what you can do is take a little bit of sandpaper and just run this along that glazing. And then you can spray this off with some brake cleaner and that's gonna help remove that glazing surface. The other check you wanna make on the brake shoes is that you have enough friction material left. So there's actually a wear indicator on most bikes. If yours does not have that, you can take a measurement using some digital calipers and compare that measurement to the spec in the book. Now, just because your brake shoes are okay doesn't mean that the brake drum is in good condition. You wanna do a few different visual inspections to make sure you can reuse this. Most of the time you can reuse it, but you just want to make sure. So with my fingernail, I'm going to run this across the surface where those brake shoes ride. If you feel deep grooves that your fingernail catches on, then chances are you're going to have to replace this hub. Same if you have a big ridge towards the end. It probably means that this drum has worn too far and again, the hub would need to be replaced. Now, the other thing that can happen, we already talked about glazing. Some of that can happen to this drum as well. So if you have a really shiny surface or maybe you have a little rust buildup in here, you can actually clean that off with some Scotch-Brite or some fine sandpaper. Now, one last thing with the drum, if you're hearing a lot of squeaking coming from your brakes, chances are there's a lot of brake dust in here and you just need to spray that out with some brake cleaner. If you are replacing your brake shoes, make sure these and your drum are oil and grease free. Use some brake cleaner on those if you need to. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is brake pivots. A lot of times, if these are corroded up, your brake either won't come in at all or it's gonna be dragging. So the first pivot we're gonna lube up is this brake cam. So to do that, we're gonna remove these brake shoes. We also need to remove the actuating arm from the other side of that cam. Now, a lot of times you'll have two punch marks that line up. That's gonna be your stock location or Every now and then you'll see a brake cam that has a couple missing teeth and the arm lines up with that and it really can only be in one position. But if you're not sure or don't see any marks, you wanna make sure you mark that. And if somebody's moved those marks from the stock position, it probably means something else in the system is worn out. So you wanna check those pads again or check that drum, make sure that inside diameter is not too large. So we'll wipe some of that dirt away from that brake cam. 
Now, if yours is really corroded, it might be kind of hard to push this out. You might have to tap it out, but ours is just going to slide out. And we're just going to clean this old stuff off. If it is corroded, you can take your Scotch-Brite and a little bit of brake cleaner and clean the surface off. The other thing you want to do is make sure that the surface inside of here is clean. Now we'll grease the cam and reinstall it into the backing plate. Now anytime you have grease around brakes, you want to make sure you clean up any excess grease. That way you don't get them on your shoes. Then we can take the pivot arm and make sure the marks are lined up. Now we'll reinstall the bolt and we're going to tighten that nut down. Now we're going to reinstall these shoes. We'll install the wheel back onto the bike and then we're going to lube the lever at its pivot. And when you tighten the axle nut down, it's a good idea to hold the brake and that way everything is perfectly centered. Up at this brake lever, there's two ways to lube this up. You can use grease, that's the best way, or you can use a penetrating oil to get in there. Then you can actuate the lever a couple times, let that lube work around, and wipe off any excess oil. Now to grease this pivot, all you would do is pull this cover back. I've already loosened the cable at the bottom. You can loosen it up here. I'm going to remove the cable, and that way we can get this thing cleaned out really good. Then you remove the nut and bolt. Remove the lever. And then you want to wipe any grime away from this. Clean that area out really good. Clean the bolt up. Then we'll just apply a thin film of grease to that pivot and then reinstall the bolt and cable. Now before we reinstall the brake cable, we want to inspect it, make sure that it's not frayed at any point. And then we're also going to lube this up. And we're just going to use our cable luber and some six in one to do that. Now, if you did see any fraying or like us, we have the other end of the cable disconnected so we can check the movement of the cable. If it binds up at all, you want to replace this cable. After that, we can reinstall the cable. So you can see some of that lube did come all the way through the cable. That's a good sign. So we'll go ahead and reconnect our cable. Now for the adjustment, you want to make sure the shoes are close to that drum, but not touching. So what we're going to do is do the main adjustment down here. We're going to take most of the slack up with this nut. You can hear it's dragging just a little bit. So I'm going to back it off a little bit. So the wheel rotates freely. Now I'm going to check the adjustment at the lever. So we're pretty close right here. I'm going to lock those jam nuts down. So we'll make that final adjustment up here at that brake perch. Now with this, you want to check your service manual for the correct spec. But one of the main things is without pulling the lever in, you want to make sure that front wheel rotates freely and the brakes don't drag at all. So we'll lock this jam nut down and slide the cover over. And that's it for the front brakes. We'll move on to the rears. Now for the rear brake pivots, you'll lube up this brake cam the same way you did the front. And to lube up these other pivots, the first thing we're gonna do is take all the tension from this brake rod and loosen this adjuster up all the way. Press down on the pedal. That's gonna give you enough room to remove the brake rod from the actuating arm. And then this pivot is either gonna have a bolt or in our case, we actually have an E-clip on the back. We need to pop that out and then the lever and brake rod, they're gonna slide out. Remove the brake spring and you just wanna clean up this area as best as you can. Clean up the inside diameter of that pivot. Use some Scotch-Brite if you need to and same thing with the brake pedal pivot. Then we'll grease this up and reassemble everything. Then we're just gonna use some spray lubricant for this upper pivot on the brake rod. All right, now when you hook this brake rod back up, you're gonna to need to adjust it obviously, and you wanna to refer to your model specific service manual for the correct adjustment, but 
something that's quick and easy. You can adjust it until you have some slight drag on that wheel. You can hear it too. And then you want to back it off three, maybe even four clicks from there. Usually three does, about, does the trick. And then as long as you don't go tighter from there, you can adjust this where you want it to kind of control when the brake pedal engages. Now just one last thing with that adjustment, no matter what, when you spin this wheel over, after you have it adjusted, you want to make sure there's no drag at all on those brakes. Those are my tips and tricks to get the best performance out of your drum brakes. If you guys have any tips and tricks, leave them down in the comment section below. And if you need any parts for your bike, be sure to check out our website for both OEM and aftermarket parts. And subscribe to the channel for more helpful content. Thanks for watching.